So, if the last version was y equals mx plus b, well, here's the next version of it. It's a slightly more complicated of it. Instead of doing a single variable, instead of just doing one x, you have multiple x's here. You have multiple independent variables, explanatory variables, that explain the values of y, your dependent variable. So, we have y equals a sub 1 times x, plus a sub 2 times x, plus a sub 3 times x, plus etc, 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 plus b. So he gets finally the y-intercept. a1 is the slope of the first variable. So as your first variable goes up, how much does y go up or down? a2, the slope of the second variable. As your second variable goes up, how much does your second um, variable go up or down? Your y in this case. a3 times x. As your third x goes up, how much does y go up with that one? And you start to see this makes sense, right? You're looking at, for each variable, how strongly do they affect y? How much, as x goes up, so as the distance between the shooter and goal goes up, what happens to the probability the shot goes in? We know it goes down, but by how much? As the angle to goal increases, we know the likelihood of the shot scoring goes down, but again, how much? Go through the process, and this tells you all of that. That's why we like regression here, and that's what we're trying to do. So for those of you who haven't taken 7th grade math in a while, I just wanted to revisit what is the slope again. And it's defined as the rise over the run. It's the change in y divided by the change in x. How steep is the best fit line? So for every unit x changes, how much does y change? And you can't really see here, but in the graph, if you look at the zero point here, so 0, 0, and then you jump over to x equals 50 and y equals, let's call it 25 or so. So what that means is you have the change in y, it's 25, the change in x is 50. The slope of this line is 1 half, 0.5. That's your slope. So for every unit x goes up, y goes up a half unit from there. Pretty simple, right? And that's really as complicated as the math gets. Um, it can get a lot fancier if you want it to, but the logic of it is basically that simple. This slide here is just to show you why this matters. Um, these two lines here, if you look at the red line and then the red dot surrounding it, the black line, the black dot surrounding it, these two have roughly the same correlation, but they have different slopes. So if you ran the correlation coefficient, you'd get about 0.92 for each of them. Strong correlation. Life is good. But it doesn't tell you how much y increases as x increases. So if you look here, this is the line we had before. It has a slope of 0.5. You do the same calculations here. Start at 0, 0. Go over to 50, and it's about 50 here. It has a slope of 1. The black line, x, affects y much more strongly than on the red one. The higher that slope, the more it affects the outcome. That's really all you need to know from this. It's the logic behind it. Um, hopefully that makes sense, and I want to move on. So, here's the math. And my professor training, you know, I teach um, a couple research methods courses at the college level. And I still don't go into the math behind it too much um, because it looks largely like this. And as you can see, Mochi the dog has completely fallen asleep thinking about it. There's a lot more to regression. There's a lot more to the process. It's a lot fancier. And to be an expert, you need to know a lot more. Um, to understand the intuition behind it, though, I'm going to give you all you need. So don't worry about the math. If you want to be, if you want to do this for a living, you should probably understand the math a lot better. But just as a quick, if you want to understand what people are doing when they build these models, you don't need to know all this fancy stuff. You don't need to know about heteroscedastic standard errors. You don't need to know exactly how to calculate B1, B2. You don't need to know about normal distributions. None of that stuff. I'm going to show you everything you need to know here, at least to understand the models, and maybe enough to be dangerous to start building them. Um, if you're interested, you can, you know, there's plenty of courses on Coursera or um, whatever, those other websites like that. Um, but this will give you at least a foundation. So when you look at um, 
you know, some methods posts from people in the analytics community, when you look at Michael Cayley's or someone else's expected goals maps, you'll understand what you're seeing. 